Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video, which is the first video in a new series where I will be playing Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So, um, I, I've mentioned many times, um, Mass Effect, the Mass Effect 2 and 3 games are my fifth favorite video game ever. And um, I am very, very, very excited to be bringing you playing not only Mass Effect 2 and 3, but also Mass Effect 1 via the Mass Effect Legendary Edition here. And so, without further ado, let's enjoy one of the greatest action RPG games ever made, Mass Effect. So as we jump into the Legendary Edition, we have Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. So we'll go ahead and get started here on Mass Effect 1. Without further ado, let's have some fun. So full disclosure, I've never played Mass Effect 1. I only ever played Mass Effect 2 and 3. So the graphics might not be the greatest for Mass Effect 1, but they will get a ton better in 2 and 3. So let's enjoy the amazing story that Bioware has for us here with Mass Effect. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. So we can play as Shepard, either male or female, or we can enter a new ID. But I always like to play as Commander Shepard, and I love that name, John. Commander John Shepard. Please log in to access your profile. Profile reconstruction complete. Name John Shepard, origin Earthborn. Reputation Soul Survivor. Class Soldier. Can we go back and pick a different class? No. Please log in to we access can't. your okay. profile. Profile reconstruction. I actually want to pick the soldier anyways. I always like the class with the most raw firepower in Mass Effect games. So let's continue. Identification confirmed. Combat difficulty. Uh, we have some choices here. So we have casual. All enemies, including bosses, are scaled down relative to the player's level. Most enemies have no special protection or immunities. So normal. Veteran scaled up based on player level most enemies have special protection most enemies scaled up based on player level ai and all enemies have protection bosses have immunities all enemies scaled up relative to player level bosses and sub bosses scale radically all enemies have protection bosses and sub bosses have immunities yeah you know me we're definitely playing on uh insanity auto level up points must be manually assigned using the squad screen each time shepherd or squad member gains a level we will go with um, off. Yeah, we want to. We want a manual level up. Level scaling. In classic mode, one to sixty instead of the one to thirty. XP and talent progressions play this. Uh, remains the same with the number of levels is doubled. We we'll go with legendary. Subtitles off. I don't like subtitles. Squad and AI will only use defensive powers to protect themselves or others. I like that because then I can command the offensive powers together and auto save on. Let's go with this. So, again, double checking combat and difficulty, insanity, auto level up off, legendary mode, um, subtitles, defensive, and auto save. So, this is going to be one tough campaign. So, <laughs> let's, let's go for it. So, I'll be playing all three Mass Effects on the most difficult difficulty, and man, it's going to be fun. Well, what about Shepard? Earthborn, but no record of his family. Doesn't have one. He was raised on the streets, learned to look out for himself. He saw his whole unit die on a cruise. He could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. 
In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history, in civilization. Prime relays in range. For an 07 game, of course, this is amazing sequence. graphically. Commander? We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. Relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. All stations secure for transit. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. So in Mass Effect, we have options here. Typically the top option is the uh, Paragon and the bottom is the Renegade. So Paragon being good, Renegade being bad. And the middle option is typically the middle. We'll go with I agree. They don't send specters on shakedown runs. So there's more going on here than the captain's letting up. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Ethan Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Is he upset? He sounds angry. Something must have gone wrong with the mission. Captain always sounds like that when he's talking to me. Can't possibly imagine why. So you see that we got Paragon plus two. So I, I also want Shepard to be a, you know, a Paragon of justice. I want to be someone who represents justice. Rally round. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room. Form up. Get down! So, not looking great. How do I sheath my pistol? Boy, just set off a grenade in the freaking hole, so... Not a great start. You're good to go. We just activated a medi-gel. That's terrible. So, what about my setting options? Controls. That's fine. Just double check we didn't change anything. Yeah.
Hey, the squad screen lets you view your team's talents. Use the uh, dialogue, you know, the uh, buttons to select a talent or its rank. Press X to spend a talent point and uh, to gain a rank in the selected talent. As you gain levels, you acquire talent points and unlock higher ranks. Alright, um. Nice. Combat armor. So I already have overkill for assault rifles. I think actually we're going to double down with assault rifles for now. Or go between pistols and um, assault rifles. I say that because health is good, but you don't want to be getting hit, period. So health can keep you alive, but look at health this way. If you increase health, where do we gain the five points? Do we gain the five points at the top or the bottom? I would argue we gain the five points at the bottom. So how many fights are we going to win with five health left or less? Because those are the only fights where health mattered here. But, you know what will matter, is the damage. The damage will be there every single time we use our gun. So let's get our pistols up as well. Pistols and assault rifles increased up. So, yeah. I think that's the correct decision. Can you undo now? No, you cannot. Excellent. So that's like, I think we made the right choice because I don't look at adding health as adding to the, 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 the bottom. I look at it as adding to the top. Oh, sorry, sorry, not to the top, but to the bottom. So... Do we do? Are we gonna win many fights with the last five or ten health? Well, we probably weren't gonna win that fight if that's what the case was. So, it, the damage adds up every single time you use your weapon. So that's where the the advantage is. I feel. Let's create a manual save if we can, just to be safe. Okay. So I'm just taking my time here because I actually don't even freaking know how to sheath my gun. Level up. Yeah. You see, like this is kind of a freaking problem, but yeah. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? I'm on my way to give him a status update right now. With all due respect, sir, maybe he'll finally tell you what we're really doing out here. I think the left... I think this option is just, like, for more dialogue. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors. Cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks too. Plus, there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. Do you have a problem with the Captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated Special Forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. So, we just heard a few very important things there. There was a war 30 years ago, I think, between the Turians and the humans. 
And uh, this guy, Navigator Percy, I think lost his family there. So this this really impacts him very deeply because he has already, he has a racial prejudice against the Turians because of what happened. And Nihilus, of course, the Spectre, who we don't know his intentions, is a Turian. So already some tensions there. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. Let's see if there's anyone else we can talk with. I can't seem to talk with him. Prime Doc. It's not the kind of place Spectres visit. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too and many you see the mini-map in the bottom right. That's where our objective is. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. You need to calm down, Corporal. A good soldier stays cool, even under fire. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I heard Nihilus once took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Man, I can't believe I'm on a mission with an actual Spectre. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the Council races, like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. They're always getting dropped into impossible situations, forced to survive unbeatable odds, just like you on a coos. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime's one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had and everything will work out. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on a coos. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not gonna screw this up. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? 
I think it's about time we told the commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. I figured there was something you weren't telling us. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The beacon's not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. Guess that explains why I bump into him every time I turn around. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low key. I want to go ahead and um, take a second here to discuss something I was just thinking, which is, firstly, Commander Shepard. He reminds me a lot of Ender Wigan in that he's a brilliant commander and leader. 
and he may not be a genius like Ender, but he strikes me as someone who like who is destined to be um, a, a leader of men. He strikes me as a natural leader of men. And then secondly, this game was made in 2007 where they talk about landing on Mars. And it's amazing to me uh, with, uh, for example, um, SpaceX created by Elon Musk and led by Elon Musk, there's thoughts about getting to Mars and, uh, you know, humanity settling other planets as well, which is amazing because this game made in 2007, they couldn't have known that in 2022, but um, and here we are, uh, you know, uh, and moving on. Uh, uh, so it's going to be very, moving forward, it's going to be very interesting to see how things are. So. Let's go ahead and uh, advance here. We're ready to go. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! Get an evac! They came out of nowhere! We need... Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. It just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold the 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. Ship perimeter secure, Commander. Oh God, what happened? This place got hit hard, Commander. Hostiles everywhere. Keep your guard up. It smells like smoke. Damn. This is a sniper, so I probably shouldn't have got the assault rifle one just yet. And so now here's my question: How can I command the uh, the uh, troops, basically? Rally round. Crouches this button. Very cool. On me. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. We get something here to change weapons. Hold L1. Let's please equip our assault rifle, our lancer. Oh, that's for these guys, right? So we want to equip our lancer. And our storm? Is this a shoddy? Looks like a shotgun. Alright. So we want our pistol. And our lancer. I want these guys to 
to both equip their Lancers, which they have. So yeah, fire I think is R1, R2, but we'll get there. And so we'll see our first combat in next week's video. And so with that I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. I'd like to be with you all. Take care, and thanks again.